Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at an entry-level gaming laptop from HP. This is the Victus 15, and like its name suggests, it has a 15-inch display on board, along with an NVIDIA discrete GPU. And we're going to take a closer look at what this laptop is all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this HP laptop is all about. Now the price point on this starts at around $749, and there are a number of different configuration options out there. This one has a few extra bells and whistles, but largely performs the same as the entry-level version. Inside, this one has an i5 12450H processor. That's a new 12th generation Intel chip. It also has an NVIDIA GTX 1650 GPU. This is an older GPU, but it still is adequate enough to play games at 1080p. And this has a 1080p display to go with it, a 16 by 9 display. Uh, our unit here has the slightly more expensive 144 hertz display. The default is 60 hertz. And this GPU is not going to get you too far beyond 60 frames per second in most games. So you might want to save yourself some money and go with the lower priced display option. Uh, this one is coming in at around 250 nits or so. It's not very bright but that's also the same brightness as the display on the entry level version. Now our review loaner here came with eight gigabytes of RAM in single channel mode, along with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD for storage. You can though take the bottom panel off and upgrade the RAM and storage if you wish. So if you wanted to go to a dual channel configuration, you could slide in another eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. You can also swap out and replace the storage. You'll note though that above the NVMe SSD, there's room for another NVMe module, but they did not solder on a connector for that module. So you can only install one on this unit. Now the keyboard is backlit, but this is not an RGB keyboard, just a single white light. The keys are well spaced and it's not bad to type on. You got a full size number pad here as well. There's not a lot of key travel to this. I was expecting a little bit more. I'm getting spoiled by some of the more premium gaming laptops we've looked at, but I think for its place in the market, it is fine. The trackpad is a little springy, but it's pretty accurate at the same time. So I can't find too much to complain about here with the input devices. There are though no biometrics on this, no fingerprint reader and the webcam does not support facial recognition. So you will need to either get an additional device brought in or just get used to typing in your pin number on this one. I'm gonna pull the power out of here so we can get a look at the ports on this. On the left hand side, we've got the power barrel connector over here, a USB 3 port and a headphone microphone jack. There is also an SD card slot here, which will take the card all the way in, so you won't have a card sticking out on you. And I'll stick one in here so you can see that. And it does click in, which is really nice. So you can augment that storage if you don't want to take everything apart. They did update the uh, ventilation on this system over the Pavilion gaming PC that this replaces. So you've got a nice air intake area here on the bottom, and we'll talk more about fan noise in a little bit. On the other side of the laptop, you have a USB Type-C port. This is a full service port, so it does video power and data, but it is not a Thunderbolt port, and its data speed is limited to just five gigabits per second, so you're not gonna get any fast I.O. on this one. But you do get gigabit ethernet here, and I tested it earlier at full gigabit speed, so that was nice to see built in. You have another USB 3 port here and then your HDMI output there. This is all plastic. It's made out of a lot of recycled plastic though, so that's a good thing. It actually feels pretty nice in the hand. It doesn't feel all that cheap. It's got a good amount of girth to it. It weighs 5.05 pounds or 2.29 kilograms, and that is without its power adapter, which I have right here. So it's not a terribly large power adapter, but you will need to bring this with you for full power. And this is running at 150 watts, which is adequate for its processor and its GPU. 
Battery life, though, is not spectacular. The entry-level version comes with a battery that will maybe get you four or five hours doing basic work on it. And if you're doing anything with that GPU, you're going to see far less battery life with this one. So you're going to want to keep that power adapter close by at all times. Now, it does have a 720p webcam here at the top. Not a spectacular image quality coming out of it, though, as you can see here. Good enough, I guess, for doing a Zoom call or something, but you're going to want to have an extra camera on board if you intend to start the next big Twitch stream. There are speakers here on the bottom, stereo speakers left and right. They sound okay, they're very crisp and clear, pretty loud, but not a lot of bass to them. Uh, so I think it's fine for doing your web conferences, but you'll probably want to attach Bluetooth headphones or plug wired headphones into the headphone jack for the best quality. Uh, the Wi-Fi, though, does work quite well for all the things you will need for network connectivity. And we'll run a quick speed test here off of my Wi-Fi 6 access point to see how it fares. And as you can see here, we're pulling about half a gigabit on the downstream. What I have found with this is that it does a little better on the upstream, which you'll see when the uh, test cycles through here. And there's nothing else currently transiting on that Wi-Fi access point. But all in, a pretty decent Wi-Fi 6 experience, and if you're gaming off of the Wi-Fi, I think it will be fine, but of course, Ethernet is always the best way to go. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs, and we're going to begin with video editing because I often recommend people look for gaming laptops for video machines. They're great for editing, but they're also great for live production, and what we've got here is a 4K 60 frames per second project of producer Jake's cat, and as you saw here, we had a transition that is basically rendering off the GPU, and it happens without any real lag or slowdown. And I can go in and maybe uh, change it to another uh, effect here and see if that renders just as quickly. And if we go back and play it here, it just happens like that. So this is one of the reasons why gaming laptops work great for this sort of thing, because you don't get bogged down with rendering and previews things tend to work pretty quickly, even at high resolutions. And again, these do great for live production as well. Just note though, that if you are a creative professional, the display here doesn't have the color accuracy for professional video color grading or photo editing. It is an IPS panel, it looks nice, but you don't have the range of color that you need to accurately do that kind of work. But for casual video editing like I do here on my YouTube channel, it's fine for that, and as you saw, the performance is quite good out of it. Let's take a look, though, at its main purpose, gaming, and we'll begin with Red Dead Redemption 2. So I set the game at the lowest possible settings at 1080p just to see what our max might be, and we are holding steady at around 60 frames per second. It's usually in the 60 to 65 territory here, uh, even with a uh, building here that it has to render. But of course, the visual quality isn't spectacular uh, when you have all the settings turned down. So as you up the visual quality, that of course will have an impact on the frame rate. But if you're looking for something super smooth uh, with this game, this entry-level laptop at the lowest settings at its native 1080p resolution will get you around 60 frames per second. A little bit earlier, producer Jake shot a bunch of footage with the laptop, so let's take a look and see what he played. So this is Doom Eternal, and Jake tried the highest settings he could get at 1080p uh, with the four gigabytes of video memory that the GPU has on board. We did have a little bit of a focus problem with this camera here. And as you can see, he was getting north of 60 frames per second uh, with this game as well. Now this game is a game that runs really fast, even on low-end hardware. So if you were looking for a super fast Doom experience, you will definitely be able to achieve that here, even with decent visual settings. And here is GTA 5 running at very high settings at 1080p. This is an older game, of course, but it runs quite nicely on this hardware, well north of 60 frames per second. And this is Fortnite running at epic settings, 1080p. This pushed the envelope a little bit more, but we were staying above 30 frames per second. Most of the time it was in the 35 to 40 frames per second range. So overall it performs quite well if you're looking to play pretty much any game that's available right now. Even the more demanding AAA titles will run 
and it's just a matter of how much visual quality you have to dial back to get to the frame rate you want. But I think if you're on a budget and you want to play some of the latest PC titles, this will get you there. And of course, you can do all of the Game Pass games with this as well. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,609. And this puts this laptop right in line with other laptops we've looked at in the past running with a 1650 GPU, although we are seeing a bit of a CPU bump thanks to the 12th generation Intel chip inside. And for virtual reality on the VR Mark Orange Room test, we got a score of 5,118. And if you're hooking up your Oculus Quest to this thing to use as a PC headset, it will work fine. But just know the newer games, you're going to need to turn those settings down a bit to hit the 90 frames per second mark that you really need for a good VR experience but older VR games should run fine on this hardware. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a passing grade of 99%, and you can see the temperatures of the CPU and GPU at the conclusion of that test. So that test indicates that the computer will maintain consistent performance even when it's placed under heavy sustained load, and that is due to some of the improvements that HP has made with their cooling system here, a larger intake, You've got a nice exhaust here out the back, and it does seem to get rid of that hot air a little more effectively perhaps than prior entry-level laptops that they have made. But that does come at the cost of some fan noise. So as you're playing a game for a good length of time, that fan will get pretty loud, perhaps a little bit louder than some of the other gaming laptops we've looked at recently, but it is cooling very effectively. And there are some settings to reduce the fan noise if you don't want to hear it as much when you're working, but that of course will result in some reduced performance. So fan noise is just kind of part of the deal uh, with gaming laptops here, and the lower cost ones tend to be a little noisier than the ones that cost more. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux performance. We always like to boot up the most recent version of Ubuntu to see how things work. And unfortunately, as you can see here, this laptop was not able to boot up Ubuntu. We did try a couple of different things, but it was pretty much stuck where you see it there. So this is not going to be something I'm going to recommend for Linux users, although it does run Windows 11 here, as you can see, just fine. Now, one of the things I love about the PC industry is that there are so many choices out there. And if you are looking for a PC that is thin and light with great battery life and great performance, you can get that, but you have to pay a lot of money. But if you just need one of those things, you can often find a pretty good deal. And that's kind of where this one sits. The performance here is great, but it has compromises. The battery life is pretty lousy on it. It is pretty big and heavy. The display isn't all that bright, but it performs well and it's able to keep itself cool with a noisy fan. And I think those are the compromises here to hit that performance level at the price point. And as you saw, this is great for AAA gaming with low settings. It is really great for doing live video production at 1080p. Software like vMix and OBS really love these NVIDIA GPUs, and it will perform uh, quite well at the task of acting as a production computer, too. So a lot of good things you can do with this, given its level of performance for its price, but there are compromises as well. So if you want that a really thin and light and powerful laptop, you're going to have to pay a premium price. And if you can't afford to do that right now, this is something worth taking a look at. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.